Hi, I'm Lee Green. Technology plays by the rules. People don't. Let me give that statement some context. In pretty much any organization, you're going to find data in segregated silos. Data silos are finely crafted and solely focused data extracts that act as solutions to business problems. And most people that produce them aren't trying to wall themselves off from the rest of the organization. Now, I've always been a fan of letting data do the talking, but consider the fact that many organizations have dozens, if not hundreds, of these individual data silos. What happens when your data silos don't speak the same language? Using data in a siloed and immature environment is like making fire with two sticks. Hard work, some guessing, and a little luck, you get fire. For most, they will jettison the sticks for a Zippo. There are, however, data survivalists. These guys make data fire from two sticks, and they love it. They have honed the process so well and are so proud of it, they now prefer the sticks. Technology doesn't have emotions, yet. But people do. And they have the sunk cost fallacy on their own investment. Why change when all I need is one more tool or just give me all the data? Transitioning data survivalists isn't about some technical tweak. These projects are about hearts and minds. They often require people to jettison something they care about for the common good or at least they will be asked to be stewards of the data, when in the past, data was a flowing stream which they controlled. So how do you help these important team members transition into champions of conform logic? Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Some team members will flat out refuse to put down the sticks and take the Zippo lighter. But I want to give you a few suggestions on how to maximize the transition of willing team members. First, recognize the good they have done for the organization. Remember, these people have countless hours keeping their data silos working to support a process. Second, identify their future role in the new architecture of conform logic and automated integration routines. You can't expect these people to get excited about a future if they're not in it. Third, give them the visibility into the information starvation that is happening across the organization. Help them see why conforming logic across the business process is so critical. Fourth, have them participate as much as possible in the strategy, planning, and execution of the future solution. Fifth, demonstrate the advantages of forwarding intelligence versus maintaining data. We need out-of-the-box thinkers to test new ideas and make discoveries. Automating the maintenance of data feeds and conforming logic frees up valuable resources to be those innovation centers. This is often difficult for data survivalists to see. Sixth. Make sure the conform logic and automated integration is addressing the business requirements before you even start a project. If the conform data in the end is useless, they'll go back to the silo. Whatever you do, don't try to derive business requirements from raw data. Hopefully you'll see that turning data into information is not just about turning wrenches. It's also about building a consensus around the truth. I'm Lee Green, Director of Business Intelligence and Enterprise Data Warehouse at Tokyo Electron. Thanks, Lee. Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. If you'd like to learn more about the connection between data and culture, take a look at the white paper link in the video description. Additionally, if you'd like to speak with an Intricity specialist about your specific situation, we've included a link for that as well.